Um, here is the uh, contents of the ground bottom flask that we carried out the oxidation of the cyclohexa, cyclododecanol, excuse me, cyclododecanol. So what we're going to do, this is cool to room temp. I've wiped out all the grease at the inside the joint. Stop clock is closed. I'm going to add that to the separatory funnel. And it may be very difficult to see, but there is a very small layer. Uh, it almost looks like a meniscus layer. That is the organic layer that we have. So what we're going to do, I'm going to add, uh, do this twice, I'm going to add 5 milliliters of uh, ether, diethyl ether to this, uh, separate the layers. I want to wash that aqueous layer a second time with the ether and then combine the ether extracts together. Uh, so I'm going to take, measure out 5 mils of the, and if it's more than 5, again, remember, we're going to get rid of all of this. So. If I add more than five, it's not the end of the world. It's close to five there. And I think what would also be good is to, because I have some product that crystallized as soon as I filtered or I poured it into the separatory funnel. So I'm going to kind of use the ether to kind of wash that out as well. And then a little bit of ether I have left over. I'm just going to do that. Alright, so I'm going with that round bottom class. I have already greased my stop cock, or see the stopper, excuse me, already greased the stopper. So remember you always want to just make sure that, that you twist that, rotate it around to make a good seal. Uh, I think now we can see the two layers much more clearly. So I'm going to shake this and bend it. Shake and just let that have time to separate the layers. You could do the test tube test again if you wanted to, uh, just to see which layer is which. Uh, the ether does have a lower density than that of the aqueous, and the bleach would have been in the aqueous layer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is drain off that bottom layer, which is the aqueous. And I want to save that because I'm going to wash it again with another 15 mils of ether just in case if there's anything organic in that aqueous layer, we can pull that out with another washing. Um, so it looks like the layers have separated pretty good. So I'm going to remove the stopcock. Here's my aqueous flask. Again, it's always a good idea to kind of label these as you need them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and drain this off. So that is our aqueous layer. I've just labeled this the ether. I'm going to combine all my ether extracts at the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and drain this off. And since ether is fairly volatile, it's always a good idea just to stop with that with some paper towel so we're not evaporating everything that we worked so hard to get. Okay, so I'm going to pour the aqueous back into the set funnel. Again, stop cock is closed. And then we'll use another 15, excuse me, another five or so mils of the diethyl ether. And always when you insert the stopper, just give it that twist. Now, I haven't shaken this yet, but um, you should be able to see two distinct layers. It's very difficult to see. I'm going to swirl this. It is a very fine line. <laughs> it is a very fine line. But you can see right there is where the aqueous and the ether layer separated. So this is this one is more difficult than others I've done before as far as separating the actual layer. So, and let me just say this also. If you were to have poured the aqueous, what you thought was the aqueous back in and then added the ether and there was no second layer, then that's the immediate flag, you got the wrong layer. 
So, but I can see it's very light, but I can see where that line, if I put my hand back there, glove, I can see the line a little bit more defined, but it is there. Right, so if the aqueous was the bottom layer before, then it's gonna be the bottom layer now, nothing's changed. So once I drain off the aqueous, I'm done with the aqueous layer. So I'm gonna open this up, and hopefully I will, I'm gonna kinda of drain this one a little slow because it is hard to see where that line is. And this is our aqueous, I'm just gonna set that in the bag, I'm done with that. So what we have in here now is the organic layer that contains our ketone, which is what we made from the oxidation. So now what we're gonna do is we go through a series of washing. We're gonna wash this organic layer with some sodium bicarbonate. That hopefully will neutralize any acid from the acetic acid that was left over. So we'll wash it with that, we'll separate the layers. Uh, again, all of the solutions are aqueous based. The sodium bicarbonate, the sodium bisulfite, the saturated sodium chloride, they're all aqueous based. So when we add them to this separatory funnel, again, the aqueous layer should go to the bottom in this case. That's not always the truth, but with the ether it is. So I'm gonna measure out, we're gonna use five mils of each of these. So we combine the ether layer from the previous washing, and then to that, I'm gonna add five milliliters of the sodium bicarbonate solution. You may see a few bubbles there, and that's doing its job, is to help neutralize any of the acetic acid that's left over. So I'm done with the sodium bicarbonate. I'll probably swirl that a little bit before I stop it, just so that if there's any more bubbles, And then we're gonna drain this off in the sodium bicarbonate solution. Now I'm gonna add to the ether layer the sodium, uh, five mils of sodium bisulfite. We've got separation. You can see the line here. So we're gonna drain off the aqueous sodium bisulfite washing. And then the last washing we're gonna do is with a saturated sodium uh, chloride solution. And sometimes what we, we use sodium chloride because you don't think of it having any acidity or basicity properties. But sometimes it's one of those last things that you may add just to make sure that anything that is in that aqueous, because the sodium chloride will go into that layer and push other things out. So it is a kind of a good thing to use uh, when you're doing these extractions. All right, we wash those. And if you notice, there was a little bit when I bent, there is some liquid that's Works out a little bit, and sometimes that's just a force that you get when you shake sometimes with the venting. I'm gonna let that sit. Um, and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna dra drain off the aqueous sodium chloride, and then we're gonna drain the ether into a uh, flask that's labeled ether. What I'm gonna do is come back and add some drying agent to that, stop it, let it sit about 10 minutes, then we need to remove the ether layer. We'll do that by a hot water bath. So now we're gonna drain off the rest of the ether layer. I think I have, okay, just drain one more little drop or two. I think there's still a little bit of aqueous there. It's very difficult to see, but I think, yes, I feel better about that now. I'm doing this slow because I don't want the ether splashing. Sometimes if you open the valve all the way for the ether, there'll be a lot of splashing and spitting at the base of the 
separatories going on. I'm going to stop for this just for a second while I go get the drying agent. And I'm going to add just enough sodium uh, of the sulfate, the anhydrous sodium sulfate. We, if it's clumps, then we know we need to add more. Just a little bit more. Sound. It looks like there's some free ones moving, so I think that's good. So we're going to set this aside and let this sit here for about, oh, uh, 10 minutes. And then once that 10 minute period is over, we'll need to filter it through a cotton plug and then we'll evaporate the ether off with a hot water bath. It's been uh, 10 minutes since uh, we've dried the ether layer. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I went ahead and weighed a round bottom flask. And the mass of that round bottom flask was 27.283 grams. And notice I have our kind of standard pipette with the cotton plug in it. I just don't want to filter any or decan any of the drying agent in there. So we will go through the transfer, filtering through the cotton plug. Now what we want to do is to uh, get rid of the ether layer and we're going to use a hot water bath for this. And if you remember from before when we do this, we want to put it in there, swirl it a little bit. We don't want to just let it sit in there because we don't want any of those ether fumes coming in contact with the heating element. I notice that when I do swirl, I'm beginning to see uh, formation of some bubbles, and that could possibly be the ether starting to boil. Again, it has a boiling point in the low 30s. Not really seeing a change in the amount of liquid that I have in there. I'm not seeing any uh, vapors. Sometimes it's, I can see vapors when the ether is still present. I'm not seeing any of that, so I'm pretty sure we've got rid of the ether. I'm not seeing, I don't really see a reduction in the amount of liquid. So I'm going to let this, I'm going to stop for this and let this cool to room temperature. And then we're going to do a weight, I'll do a melting point, and we'll do some, a couple chemical tests.